the next step in Apple's financial hegemony plan, turning iPhone into a payment terminal. Last week, Bloomberg reported that Apple is planning to introduce a new feature in the coming months that will let merchants accept card payments directly through their iPhones. In short, it wants to make its device a payment terminal or a point-of-sale machine. The report noted that this feature will be part of a software update in the coming months. So if you're a merchant, you won't have to go through a lot of steps to set it up. In 2020, Apple acquired Canada-based payments startup MobiWeave, which enabled mobile phones to act as payment terminals. Before this acquisition, the startup worked with Samsung to turn the Korean tech giant's NFC-enabled phones into POS machines. Apple's upcoming feature is expected to work in the same way. However, there are a lot of unknowns about the product at this moment. Will it be under the Apple Pay umbrella? Will Apple use the existing payment processing network or create its own? Square is one of the biggest companies in North America when it comes to POS. Machines. The company sends merchants a free MagStripe card reader and charges just $49 for a contactless one. However, Apple can one-up them by removing any hardware constraint and letting merchants just use their phones. Plus, it can make people using Android phones a customer. Kevin Sussman, VP Brand Communications at Matrix X Software, a company that works with carriers for Monet Azadion, said this new feature can help Apple get into a wider peer-to-peer -peer payment space, where companies like VNMO operate. He also said Apple CASHS adoption spread is questionable. Notably, Apple already lets you send money to your friends registered on the Apple Pay network without any charges. But iPhones as payment terminals could be a whole different ballgame. Square offers basic inventory management and analytics features to its 64 million plus merchants. While Apple has the power to turn millions of iPhones into cash registers, it'll be important to see the suite of support software and commission fee it'll offer. GPH Ta H Jidazayuchi, a co-founder and CTO of Kipay, a bookkeeping startup based out Niger A, said Apple should provide APIs for developers so that service provider apps can easily integrate this new feature. He mentioned that as iPhones are costly in many parts of the world, the company should also focus on having backward compatibility for cheaper and older devices. The Cupertino giant doesn't disclose what it earns from Apple Pay but reports indicate it takes a 0.15% commission on transactions processed through Apple Pay. The company's payment accepting feature can add a significant revenue stream. Shah Afbar Geffen, CEO of Israel-based fintech company COTI, said Apple wants to build believes Apple wants to create a public habit of using its payment services. According to a report published by UK-based Juniper Research, there will be more than 4.4 billion mobile wallets across the world by 2020. 5. However, 69% of transactions will be based in mobile payments heavy markets such as India and China. Apple would want to own a big chunk of that market in the rest of the world especially in North America. In 2020, Loop Venture Zero to said more than 500 million customers had activated Apple Pay on their iPhones. But there's no number to verify if those people ever made any payments. According to Insider Intelligence. There are more than 43 active million Apple Pay users in this, and the company will add more than 11 million to that figure in the next four years. The report notes that this in-person payments market will expectedly hit the $6.4 trillion mark this year, and that's a good sign for first-time entrants like Apple. A survey conducted by fintech site PYMNT last year indicated that more than 65% of us consumers prefer to pay by credit or debit card in physical stores. Apple Pay's share in that was just a 0.6%. Apple turning iPhones into terminals is a surefire way to boost its visibility and traction in the space. Over the last few years, Apple has been focused on expanding its services business, especially financial offerings. In 2019, it launched the Apple Card and plans to expand it to more countries. Last July, a Bloomberg report noted the company is exploring a buy now, pay later product with Goldman Sachs. If Apple starts accepting payment on a seller's behalf, it can explore more financial products, ranging from loans to management services. Really, this news shows how serious Apple is about getting its services to reach a $1.5 trillion valuation alone. And, at this stage, who would bet against it?